So how do I design my tables for my database, whether it's an Access database or SQL Server or Azure SQL or whatever? How do I design my tables so that they are efficient? And what are the steps that I go through in order to get there? I'm your host, Sean McKenzie, and today we are going to do an exercise in normalization. We're going to take data from a spreadsheet that might look like a spreadsheet that you have, uh, which is where a lot of people start. They've got a spreadsheet full of data and they're wondering how they design a database uh, so that they can transform the process that they're using the spreadsheet in or whatever into their database. And today that's what we're going to take a look at. Now, if you're on my Patreon, make sure to check out my latest video where I talk about why data normalization is so important. Let's get to it. Okay, so most examples that I've seen start with a spreadsheet and usually it is some data that has been collected manually and people uh, are managing some process in a spreadsheet and eventually it gets too big for the spreadsheet and they go, well, hey, uh, can we create a database and then an application that will handle this? And so as you can see in this spreadsheet, I have a project with a whole bunch of equipment that's being used on a particular project. And you can see there's two projects. There's a Bravestone project and a Hammersmith project. And it looks like there are some empty rows here. And so you get a sense that we need to figure out what this data means. And upon closer inspection, we can see that there is a project group uh, and you can see in the project group there, you know, there's a name, there's a manager and, you know, project length and things. And then there's also almost like an equipment list for each of those projects. And, you know, this looks like it's a sample from a much bigger spreadsheet that has way more entries on it. And so that takes us to our first task, which is to put the data into first normal form where there must be a primary key and no repeating groups. And so currently this is kind of what the data looks like. There are two groups of data. The first group is in the blue brackets. Um, that's sort of like the project. And then the equipment list on each project that's in the spreadsheet is in the red brackets there. And that is sort of a repeating group. And you can see that the columns in the repeating group obviously seem to work differently than the columns in the uh, project group. And so to take a closer inspection, we can actually go to our uh, spreadsheet here and we'll copy this over. Um, I'll make this spreadsheet available to you on my downloads page. Um, and I'm just going to paste it into another, another worksheet here. And uh, we'll change this data uh, to conform to first normal form, which is uh, now we, we can split those two groups, the project and the equipment, into two tables, or we can do a copy down, um, which will satisfy, that will satisfy first normal form as well. It's not going to be the uh, best for our database because we're going to go further, but we want to first get our data into uh, what we call first normal form. And so that would look kind of like this, uh, where we, you know, there's no repeating groups with uh, empty spaces. Uh, we know exactly on each row, uh, you know, all of the project information and all of the equipment information. And uh, now what we need, uh, now that we have this, now what we need is a primary key. And a primary key is how we uniquely identify each row and so we can do that in this case we can see that if we take the project code and the equipment ID it will uniquely identify every row in this table and so by doing the exercise we just did we're actually going to remove those red and blue brackets and we have one table which is uh, first normal form now for second normal form we need to have a schema that is in first normal form and there are no partial functional dependencies. And by looking at this data, I can see that there are two 
uh, IDs, uh, the two IDs that uniquely identify our records, but each of those has a list of fields that really only depend on that one key. And so uh, those are called partial functional dependencies and we can eliminate those by splitting the data for each of those uh, keys into their own tables. And so that might look like something like this. We have project data in this table and then we might have uh, the equipment data in another table which makes sense according to what we saw our dependencies were but in this case we had leftover columns um, and we also have a relationship between the project and equipment data and that goes into a third table which we can see here that has project code and equipment ID as well as the sector used and this kind of table is known as a junction table or sometimes is called a transaction table where you you can see the many-to-many -many relationship between the project code and equipment ID uh, fields and so uh, you can see that sector used has been put on there but this is typically where you'll add a whole bunch of uh, information or fields in your table about um, that particular time in this case that the equipment is being used and more detail about that time that it's being used and that's very very handy and you can see how flexible this has suddenly become because now we can have the same equipment being used on many different projects or many different projects using many different kinds of equipment uh, over and over again and it makes it for a very stable way to store lots of information about this particular uh, scenario and so at this point I will draw your attention to the underlying fields just to remind you that those are primary keys uh, so the project code is the key for the project table the the equipment ID is the primary key for the equipment table and then the combination of the project code and equipment ID together is used as the primary key for the uh, the table that's going to have the instance where a particular equipment was used on a project. We haven't named them yet, uh, but take a look at those fields that are in italics and uh, the italics uh, denote that those are foreign keys and so those are foreign keys so you can see that that new table we created has a primary key that's made up of the two keys from the other two tables. And so now that we have a table that is just about the time that a piece of equipment was used on a project and it's different from every other time, then you can store other information, you know, like the driver and all kinds of other things that are related to only that time that that, that piece of equipment was used on a particular project. And so that gives a second normal form and now we can look at third normal form which means that the schema must be in second normal form and there are no transitive functional dependencies and so going back to our data we can see that we do have a transitive functional dependency which means that there's a field or an attribute that actually is determined by another field in the same table and so in this case we have uh, depot name uh, which depends on the depot number and it never changes they always have to be uh, in sync um, and so you can kind of think of these as as lookup tables if you're an application designer um, usually it'll be lookup tables where you don't want to store um, the description of a lookup item in your table as well as the ID you just want to put the ID in there and then when you do a query you bring everything together to display it to the user and so we want to eliminate all of the transitive functional dependencies from our tables and uh, what we might see would be something like this where we remove that depot name from the equipment table and then put all of the depot information into another table and not only does that help you get to third normal form but you benefit because if say a depot name changes you can just change it in one entry in one table and you don't have to go through every record in the equipment table and update it. 
Now once we have those transitive functional dependencies out of the way, we also want to go and take a look at any kind of derived data and, uh, and remove that from our uh, tables because those can be queried at any time and so they're actually kind of redundant and by keeping them and updating them uh, it's making our database slower and all kinds of other things. Okay, so we reached third normal form and now we get to do the fun part that everybody wants to do first but they should do last and that is to add some names to your uh, tables and uh, those names may change through the process and it's one, one of the reasons why we don't want to name them too soon especially if you're building your tables in design mode in your SQL server or your Postgres database or Microsoft Access or whatever and you've already named everything and then you realize that you have to split some tables out and your names no longer make sense. Um, I don't know how many databases I've uh, taken over where the name of the table didn't actually respond to the actual function of the table uh, and, and it's very very easy for that to happen. Okay so what do you guys think? We normalize some data to third normal form. Uh, is there a way that you would make this uh, normalization better? Um, if you were to add more tables to your database, what might those be? Put your comments in the comment section below. I'd love to see what you guys think about this and if you think this is similar to a situation that you're currently in, make sure to put that in the comments below. And of course, if you like what you saw today, please make sure to smash that like button. And if you have not subscribed yet, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. It really helps out. Make sure to check out the description below for additional links and information.